Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary friends. If it's your first time here, welcome. And if not, welcome back to Actors with Issues with me, your host, Juan Ayala, bringing you another quick and casual chat with a delightful actor from the small screen, the big screen, or the Broadway stage. Today, we are joined by the stars of CBC and IMDb TV comedy series, Pretty Hard Cases. It's Meredith McNeil and Adrian Seymour. Meredith and Adrian, welcome. How are you? I'm Good. great. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So uh, before we dive into uh, the show, Pretty Hard Cases, we always start with a quick rapid fire round of questions if you're up for it. Sure. Yeah. Great. Hit me. All right. Hit us. Meredith, coffee or tea? Coffee. Adrian, film or television? Film. Meredith, sketch comedy or stand up? Sketch. I've never done stand up. Adrian, I want to answer that one. Comedy. Stand up. <laughs> okay. Adrian, drama or comedy? Stand up. Ah, dramedy. Mm, there deal you with go. That <laughs> good job. Good job. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Meredith, last show that you binge watched. I'm binge watching Yellowstone. Good choice. And uh, Adrian, what performer has had the biggest influence on you? Ooh, Meredith McKay. Okay. Um, <laughs> Cicely Tyson. Me. Good Me. answer. <laughs> oh yeah, Meredith McNeil. Uh, Meredith, what was your first non-acting job? I was a clean houses and a babysitter. And uh, Adrian, same for you. What was your first non-acting job? I was a nanny. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, lastly, and I worked in, in a cookie shop. I worked in a cookie shop too. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, lastly, in just three words, describe your most memorable audition. And memorable can be good or bad. So I leave that up to you. My first t television audition, my first professional television audition, because um, I had done theater all up until that point. So and even though I had taken classes on how to you know, do camera auditions, nothing compares to when it's your actual first one, like a real casting director, you're going into the casting office right. and it's like people in the waiting room and you hear them and you know that they're there. And so all of those elements were like coming at me. And during the audition and the, and the casting director were fans of mine because they had seen me in theater. They were like, oh, we loved you and milk like sugar and da 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 da. But I was still so nervous that the entire time I never once looked at the casting director. I looked straight down the barrel of the camera <laughs> for the entire audition. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so I was basically <laughs> practicing for interviews, <laughs> on-camera <laughs> interviews at that moment, <laughs> instead of an audition. And uh, Mary, I, you. Okay, I'm going to try and say it without dirty words. But basically, okay. I was you I love your dirty words, though, Meredith. Oh, God, I know, but I, just, I, just, I can't get fired. I gotta pay the rent, I'm a single mom, um, but I'll give it a go. So, uh, and I was in the UK at the time and I was doing a lot of advert auditions because it was good, fast money. And this was for a really big client, like a really big, well-known <laughs> brand name. And basically the one of the clients was late to the audition. So I was sitting in the room with most of the people that worked for the brand. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the person that was late came in and for some reason I thought we were all on side. Like we knew what we were doing there. Nobody really wants to be there. Nobody really wants to promote a big, huge brand that possibly destroys countries or nature. And so I was like, and he was like, Oh, I'm really sorry that I'm late. I was like, oh man, don't worry about it. We're all just sitting around. We all know what we're doing. We're just the devils anyway. Uh, and they <laughs> literally, because you know that term means what you know what that term means. Literally, there was silence in the room. I went to laugh hysterically, like, because we're all on the same page. We weren't all on the same page. <laughs> the head of the brand was right there. There was such dead silence. I just went, should I leave now? And they just went, <laughs> yes. And I was oh like, my God. I know. It's the thing that I like. It's weird. I love that. I always think artists, I never want to lose that, that art, maybe not swear and say, talk about the devil's privates, but um, I do love the idea that artists should still continue to think that everybody is on the same page, that we're all in this together, because it's when the division happens between producers and artists and actors that it gets weird. So I want to have the naivete, but just not like swear and insult the client in the audition. <laughs> Good advice fair. for our actors and artists listening. <laughs> Don't yeah. insult the client. 
Yeah. Uh, so ladies, I am absolutely loving the show. It's such a funny and new take on the classic buddy comedy genre. Um, but I want to go back to season one. Um, so how did the show come about for the two of you? Was it the typical audition process? Was it pitched to you? And I'm sure with COVID, there are lots of self tapes and Zoom calls involved. But how did all that start for you? Um, you know, uh, I was working on a uh, theater show, I think. Oh, no, I was finishing up Orange. No, yeah, I was finishing. Child, I don't know what I was doing. I was working, <laughs> though, thank God. And, um, you know, pilot season was coming around. And, you know, you're like, oh, I think I was on Orange because it was like, well, this job's going to be over soon. <laughs> I need to figure out my next steps. Um, and so... My team brought me the script and I put myself on tape for it. And um, shortly thereafter, the producers reached out and wanted me to come to Toronto and meet with Meredith. So that's that was that was how it started. And the first time I met Meredith, I just, you know, fell in love with her. And I was like, you know, I could do Toronto. I had, And here, here's the other funny story, because I'm, I'm you always hear me talk about my belief in manifesting things. Um, in my life. And a year prior to that, for my birthday, 2018, I'd gone to Toronto with my cousins and had the best time. And as I was, as we were driving back to um, New York before we crossed over, because we all know that Niagara on the Cana on the Canadian side is like a little bit more beautiful. Um, <laughs> I was like standing at the water and I was just like looking out over the water and I was like, I could come back here and work. Like I would love to see Toronto and live here and work here for a while. And I was saying this like as I was leaving and who would have thought a year later, I would, you know, uh, this opportunity would, would come my way. So it's like, I kind of, you know, churned it up in the, in the universe. And Meredith, what about with you? Similar, but not, obviously I live in Canada. Um, was approached by the two creators of the show, Sherry White and Tassie Cameron, which I was already massive fans of. Their work is phenomenal and who they are as women is just as phenomenal and was brought in to meet Adrian. And from there, it was just like chaos, naughtiness, fun, and was like, this is going to be the best experience. Uh, also like meeting your co-partner when you're like, oh, you're just as, you want to have just as good as time as I do for 16 hours a day let's go for it <laughs> is kind of an unbelievable I have so much gratitude for that because I, I I never not want to take it for granted because to be on set for that many hours and not have the laughs we do must be so hard I feel like we've heard so many stories of of you know uh, scene partners or actors on shows not having the greatest chemistry or their butting heads so it's really great to hear that you guys like have that wonderful uh chemistry together on set and it's also like the generosity so that when you are doing take after take, Adrian and I are just as present for each other when the camera's not on us. Like I have, mm -hmm. we both, not to sound totally cheesy, I think I'm fortunate to be partnered with someone that loves their craft so much and respects it. And mm -hmm. I too, so that even when it doesn't even matter who the camera is on, it's like in that moment, what are we creating? Like, what is that mark? What is that moment? And um, I think that's what makes it. So we do have great chemistry, but I think it is also founded in a basis of respect for what we're doing. Yeah, there's there are times, you know, I've been on set where it, if it's not that actors shot their camera angle, you know, you have. Uh, ADs or PAs reading you the lines and with our show it's 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 not that you know Meredith will come on set um, even if it's not her her you know her her shot her in her scene to film and you know she will read lines with me um, and it just it, that's just a generosity as you said that it's just you know it's it's a, sometimes it, it's a lost art in our in our profession for mm -hmm. sure. And so I know that the season two of the show has been running on CBC for a few months now, um, but it'll finally be streaming on IMDb TV for U.S. audiences to see here. Um, so how are we feeling? Excited, nervous, eager? Oh, gosh, totally excited. I can't wait for the stateside to uh, get a hold of Pretty Hard Cases season two. I think we learned a lot in season one. I think the relationship between Sam and Kelly gets only more dramatic and exciting and vulnerable. Um, I feel like, I don't know, it feels like it's a faster paced show in season two. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I definitely think, you know, we were dealing with a lot of things, you know, in season one, not just 
figuring out and just and setting what the tone for the show is going to be, but we're doing it in the midst of, you know, a lockdown. Like we were still in the lockdown and in a pandemic and, you know, mass covers and, and, and mass coverings and so much of, I think the success of a show is the, are the relationships that the cast and crew build, build. And it was difficult when you, you know, you're kind of looking at people like, you know, this, and you're trying to form these relationships with them. But one of the things um, that I was going to say earlier um, that I also just am so grateful to Meredith for is that we both um, from season one said that we want this to be a fun set. You know, we're, we know we're going up against a lot of odds and we don't want people to come here and feel like, oh, I want to work on this show. You know, we want people to be like, yes, I get to be on Pretty Hard Cases. I get to work with, you know, Meredith and Adrian and, and, and Al and Darren. It's, you know, so that was something that we, we said, even on the hard days, you know, it, you know, we'll just try and muster it up and, and <laughs> we look at each other and be like, how are you feeling today? How, how old are we going to be today? Yeah. You know, so yeah, we, we just, we just try to make it a fun environment. Cause yeah, we're not saving lives, you know, like, we work the same amount of hours that a that a that a, um, a surgeon would work, but we're not saving lives in that way. We're saving lives in a different way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, ladies, before we go, uh, we do have to wrap, unfortunately. But I just wanted to. We always end our show with this last question: In ten words or less, what advice would you give to a young actor? I would Maybe. say trust who you are and what you have to say and that your truth is going to always be original. And Adrian? And uh, to piggyback, I would say, don't be afraid to be your authentic, accurate, unapologetic self. Awesome. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. I'm so excited for season two. For everyone listening, you can catch season two of Pretty Hard Cases on IMDb TV, Amazon's free premium streaming service starting April 22nd. I'm Juan Ayala. This is Actors with Issues, and we'll see you next week.